Hello, 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 and welcome back to another reaction video. It's brought to you by Self, the programmer. Um, before we start off with that, if you are new, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the likes, hit that thumbs up, smash it for me. Why don't you? If you are already subscribed, thank you very much for subscribing. I thank you very much. Um, you know, just do that for me and then we should do we should be all right at least you know um subscribe comment all that good stuff but without further ado we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it, this video and uh don't forget about my gaming channel as well uh bob the links gaming so without further ado we're gonna jump into this video but self has always have us scratching our heads about Goku versus Tatiana. Now, I know much about Goku. I very I know very much about Goku. Tatiana, I don't know much about him. I know some people are looking like you for real. Yes, I'm for real. I don't know much about him. I know he's one punch man. I know about him just a teensy bit. But the thing about it is, I know what his capabilities are as well as Goku's. So this he's put together a God honest truth. So we're gonna figure out exactly what his God honest truth is about. So we're gonna see how this is gonna go. Um we may side with it, we may not. Depends. I haven't even seen it. I know a whole lot of people are like really looking at it and scratching their heads about it. So I'm about to go ahead and join the fray and do the same thing so let's jump right into it imagine that you just finished reading the original dragon ball manga and watched goku grow up from some naive kid in the jungle who didn't even know what a girl was to fighting yeah. a god slaying <laughs> demon with the whole universe cheering for him near the end i know and right going to raise its reincarnation named oob as the strongest person in the whole universe looking for more however many years or chapters it took afterwards yeah that's pretty much about some data your next read through of a new series you go in expecting a another journey of growth like many shonen you've seen already but this time instead of starting from the bottom this character is already at the top a character who is already the strongest in the story from i the know game, right a second lap for shonen One punch man that shouldn't have to start over if you were to throw Goku at the end of the story and pit him against the terrible Demon King Piccolo, the dominator of the universe Frieza, or the culmination of the past generation in Cell, Goku should be able to deal with them in one punch, if not even less maybe. But this doesn't just apply to Goku, what about Naruto or Ichigo from Bleach? What if you put Naruto after reaching the end of his story against the Demon of the Mist Zabuza? Gara of the Sand, or the leader of the Akatsuki Pain, surely it would still be no contest. Hmm. Same applies to Bleach or know, right? almost any battle shonen out there. This concept is One's vision of Saitama and One Punch Man, a protagonist that starts at the end game but still has to live through the story with how it would affect him and others. I know, right? If Goku is in the same position as Saitama is, he would more than likely be very, very bored. And that's exactly I know, Saitama's right? predicament throughout the story of One Punch Man. Murata often compares Goku and Saitama as two carefree characters that live for the excitement, but are often too strong for the people around them. And whenever you see them, you feel as though everything okay. will be okay. But even though Murata, the artist of the One Punch Man manga, compares them, how would they actually stack up against each other in a fight? Or I know, right? That's the that's the question that everybody wants to know. Punch? One Punch Man is an ongoing series, so it's impossible to say for certain what Saitama's max limit in combat is, nor am I going to act like I know it. But that doesn't stop people from arguing about this subject, and if someone put a questionable device to my head and forced me to answer, or else, this is what I would say. Whether it be potential King Piccolo jokes, or possible Attack on Titan references, Saitama has one-shotted many creatures in the story, regardless of whether or not they can destroy entire cities or mountains with no effort, and no matter what heroes these monsters defeated beforehand or struggled with, okay. Saitama almost and not purposely seems to undermine everyone else with how effortlessly 
He disposes of every serious threat that everyone risks their lives fighting. I know, Although, right? To Sir Thomas' credit, he does take a blow on purpose during the Deep Sea King fight by acting like he only won because every other hero before him weakened it. Even the dominator of the universe, who can either blow off the surface of the planet or destroy entire stars, depending on what guidebooks and translations you use, yada yada, gets one tapped by a serious punch from Saitama. Even when this same being Boros could launch Saitama to the moon at probably around light speed with a single kick. Even later, when the rank 2 hero and Esper, Tatsumaki, fights against the Monster King fused with another Psychic okay. named Psychos and splits a massive continental disc off the entire planet, Saitama is heavily implied to still be far stronger and deals with human monster Garo rather easily, who is considerably stronger than every other monster the heroes had to fight from the Monster Association. This is due to it being implied that Tatsumaki needs to be at full condition to deal with a guy named Golden something something and is fodder to even a not transformed monster Garo. Okay. Blah, blah. However, the unfortunate reality of this is that Saitama's feats still don't really compare to Goku's. Now, I'm not saying Goku. We should file. A okay. Let's, let's, let's take that in a little bit. Okay, he's talking. He's going real deep in this. This is Blankos, the free to play multiplayer uh. game where you can unlock, earn, and. All right wins just because he has better feats, but we need to get this feat part out of the way, obviously. In terms of feats, I think even the craziest of One Punch Man fans would agree Goku has more to offer. It's just the natural progression of the stories. Goku I know, right? had much more power progression and clipping, whereas Saitama, despite being at his endgame power, does not need to use this endgame power against earlier villains in his series, so obviously Goku has more to showcase. And not only has Goku had more time to do so, but Goku has even gone beyond just his end game version in terms of feats, and even got a blatant continuation to his story in Dragon Ball Super, where he even gets to display more feats on top of that. So it's pretty yeah, obviously true. Goku's favorite here, true. and not very fair to say. Now, not to say Dragon Ball Super continues after the end of Z, because obviously the end of Z is a time skip, but just in terms of yeah, it is it's a time skip after definitely the series was over. Goku similarly has had to fight beings who could vaporize entire cities, had to outscale people who could one-tap the moon, beings who could point or wave away entire planets, creatures that could obliterate solar systems, and even gods who could punch away the universe on accident. Even in terms of speed, Goku has had to dive past a universal body in the anime in quick succession, surpass the gods of destruction who could leap from the universe to outside of it almost instantaneously, okay. and play with planets like Ping Pong or even considering traveling the universe in a couple of minutes rather slow. In one instance, an assistant of one of these gods goes to fetch said god, food, three minutes away in another star system, and after getting impatient, the god of destruction appears there instantly within a minute. At least really? it's implied so. In Ultra Instinct, Goku's newest form, he easily reaches these levels, if not arguably beyond it, due to surpassing all of these gods of destruction through his battle with Jiren, a being above the gods. Not to say these okay. gods of destruction couldn't have gotten stronger since then, but at the time since said feats were described, he is stronger than them. With Goku in just his Super Saiyan form against Beerus having a punch that contained power to destroy the entire universe, as described by the narrator numerous times, and only being hundreds to thousands of times stronger now with multiple transformations on top of that, you can see why Goku has this feat category a bit on lock, although as I said earlier, Saitama is in the early stages of his story and might show something crazy later on. This really? is just what we know at the moment. This is also important, but some people try to debate against Goku's feats quite often, and I feel like I will have to talk about this if I'm going to try to end the topic for now. However, the basic outline of it is that Goku scales to people who can shake infinite voids, and the narrator clearly says Goku has punches that can obliterate the universe, as well okay. as Beerus, even though he surpasses Beerus, at least at this time later. The obvious yeah, which I is that Goku noticed that too. I noticed that happened to too. The universe, as is shown in both the anime and manga under the original author's supervision, Toriyama literally put the universe destroying punch in both versions when he didn't really have to. Another one is that people think that Dispo, a creature from a tournament later on in Dragon Ball Super, which is stated to surpass the speed of sound and light, somehow downplays Goku because people are acting like being fast and light is impressive. 
However, not only does this statement simply say Dispo surpassed the speed of light, not the speed of light, he's just beyond it. But even if you steel man that and said Dispo, a fast character later in the series, was only the speed of light, this character struggles with characters much weaker and slower than Goku, that Goku himself surpasses many times over and would simply outscale Saitama even with that low ball. I outline more of this scaling in my How Strong is Ultra Instinct Goku video, which you can okay. watch here. Even with the concept of, say, God in the One Punch Man universe, or if you wanked it and said he was the universe itself and Saitama would one-shot it, it still wouldn't really compare to Goku currently. The next part is many people try to get into Saitama having no limits. Yeah, he However, having no limits. You see in Dragon Ball, you know, Goku doesn't really have limits either. And the whole limit breaking concept in One Punch Man, Goku breaks his body's limits numerous times. He doesn't just break them one time, he breaks them numerous times. And in One Punch Man, breaking and then he do it on purpose. Omnipotent. We know Garo broke his limits and still could get a lot stronger, and Saitama still dealt with him with no problem. Oh, okay. Boros with meteoric burst breaks his body's limits. And Saitama broke his body's limits, and there's still gaps between them. It doesn't make you omnipotent to have no limits in One Punch Man. So it's not really an argument. You guys get the point regardless. Yeah. So from here, the next obvious argument to go over is not feats, but narrative implication. Perhaps it is simply Saitama's narrative that he must defeat everyone in One Punch, or else he's I know, right? Saitama. <laughs> to get into this, we have that's to the whole. Of that's the whole point of the whole, the you know, manga. The day. As I outlined earlier. One, the actual author of the series, wanted Saitama to be an end game level protagonist that has all of his power at the beginning because it'd be more exciting for second time readers of a shonen series. He states that these end game protagonists always seem to be able to beat everyone else and are the strongest. However, that statement would also apply to characters from other shonen series like, not like not Naruto, Punch Man, like Naruto, Ichigo, etc. So, even if they are beating everyone else and are considerably stronger or potentially are the strongest in their story at the end, do we think that Naruto can beat everyone else in fiction because of this one statement? Does Goku beat everyone else in fiction? Ichigo? Not very likely. But if your name is James, don't answer that. I don't think <laughs> one is trying to okay. say that either. And nor do I think he's saying Saitama would solo stomp fiction. He's simply wanting his story to be in reverse because it would be interesting. This usually gets into a lot of theories, as I said, but a good way to wrap up this particular argument is this. If Saitama's narrative is that he must win in one punch, then what about the characters that have to win narratively as well? Do they just cancel each other out? For instance, in the manga series Hajime no Ippo, there's a character called Takamura who is undefeatable so long as he sacrifices a piece of himself for a boxing match. Would this mean that if Saitama, even he, went all out against Takamura in a boxing match, he would lose so long as Takamura sacrificed a piece of himself? What about characters who always win due to luck, like Master Chief? Are these narratives superseded by the idea that Saitama oh, her, has fought um, strong I forgot her name. monsters and Takamura <laughs> hasn't? If feats are what matters, then why even bring up this narrative against Goku or other shonen characters then? The same would simply apply. Not only this, but Saitama doesn't really one-shot every villain anyway. Like, it's implied he might be able to with the serious bunch, but say, for instance, the Monster King Orochi, he says, oh, I don't have to take it easy on you because you're an actual monster. So he tries to kill him in one punch. Not a serious punch, but he tries to kill him in a punch, and Orochi survives. And that's how he comes back later and fuses with Psychos. He also tries to one-punch Supernatural Water, which he doesn't kill in one punch. He also no. didn't kill Boros in one punch. There's a lot of instances where he doesn't just kill people in one punch. Even no, I noticed it. Full power. It would also apply with characters who we don't know the upper limit of. For instance, Zeno is only stated to be undefeatable above everyone else and can erase every character in the show with zero effort in a series like Dragon Ball, which contains gag characters like Arale. And it's implied that if this is the case because he's childish and goofy. Showing a narrative even kind of above Saitama in terms of a debate like this, does this mean Zeno inherently wins against Saitama? I don't think that's fair to say. In fact, I don't think using narrative in a versus vacuum is very reasonable at all. It seems to be less accurate than simply empirically gauging a character's actual zone strength. Of okay. course, there's exceptions, especially when you're debating t over the past five years, I have taught people on, all man. over the world how to play stock. I even taught this strategy to my two right. characters from the same set of fiction in which narrative is more important than in a cross-verse debate but i'll get more of what i mean concerning this particular matchup soon 
the next argument is Saitama is a gag. So because yeah, of the money, yeah, he I, would yeah, win. I you can don't see really that. Want to get I can see that Saitama is a gag character here since that would yeah, be I can see that. But the people who say this, I'm just gonna ask you: Did you ever read the series? I'm not, and I'm not exaggerating what I no, say. No, I haven't. I'm gonna tell you that straight up. I haven't. Just for this video alongside the web comic, and I have zero idea where that's really coming from. Well, that's not true. I kind of understand, but it seems to be from a place of anime only fandom <clears throat> and illiteracy. <clears throat> So, at the start of One Punch Man, Saitama is clearly displayed comedically with his goofy appearance, his contrast to other flashy shonen heroes and so on, which also helped make One popular to begin with, those types of characters that break the mold. Him beating people in One Punch is supposed to be the joke at first, but that joke starts to not become a joke anymore, and we start to feel bad for Saitama as the story keeps going on. With every chapter and villain Saitama one-shots, you get the idea that Saitama's humanity is kind of withering away, and that is most evident after the martial arts tournament in which a whole chapter is dedicated to Saitama's depression and King trying to cheer him up and help him discover something else. Yeah, and try out, that's one thing about him. During many fights early that's one thing about him. He don't show no emotion at all. He doesn't show any emotion at all. He's just straight-faced. The whole time, like the way you see him down at the bottom of, well, you might not can see it behind me, but definitely on the other side, on the right hand side, it's the way he looks the whole time. Every time he fights, he go and do the dishes, or he goes to the store, he looks the same way. He just looks like, you know, just that's the way he looks. And that's the way he was portrayed the whole time. And it just seems like he just didn't have no emotion, no nothing like that. He's like, it was, I, I wouldn't say unhinged or nothing like that. It's just, he was just like, he don't care what happens. He said, oh, well, if something bad happens, then it just happens or whatever. I'll just come there and just do what I got to do. And then that'll be the end of, you know, that's the kind of energy I'll be giving off from him. Earlier in the series, as I said, they are comedic. And even when you think Saitama is finally struggling or met an opponent that impresses him, this shock demeanor turns out to be because he forgot about a sale or something, and then <laughs> one shots whoever he's know, right? like, say, Carnage Kabuto. However, the Boros fight is very, very different, and so is the Garo fight later. Now, I blame the anime for this, but in the manga, and even the webcomic at some points, Saitama has a few more details that show his character during the whole Boros saga, per se. For one, when he meets Boros, he brings up the prophecy he heard which led him across the universe. And upon hearing the prophecy, Saitama twitches in excitement. Boros then brings up a story about how he, like Saitama, defeated everyone rather easily and was bored. He was almost like an antagonistic parallel of Saitama, a hero nobody knew versus a villain nobody knew, having a limit-breaking deathmatch that nobody would see. At the beginning, the fight is still rather comedic. The famous okay line as Boros sheds his armor <laughs> is iconic, but the rest of the fight ceases to be that comedic once Boros also starts to become more serious, as it's implied by Saitama that he already knew Boros wasn't trying his best either. Instead of Saitama acting like he's shocked because he forgot a sale like against Carnage Kabuto, he's shocked because Boros is genuinely stronger than he expected, in which Saitama even calls Boros strong not once, but twice after the OK one. This is once again in the manga only and not in the anime, but once Boros then goes meteoric burst and shocks Saitama again, he kicks Saitama to the moon and Saitama says, this is almost a real fight, in which he then comes back to Earth. He, he, he always do that, always do that, all the time. Saitama uses a serious punch in response. Now, the translation of this panel is debated about, in which it can mean this is almost a real fight, or this is almost a fight, you know, or etc. However, Viz corrected this to mean real fight as the word tatakai can mean war, battle, or fight, and is more serious than, say, a word like a bout. Saitama then follows this up with a serious punch, and one actually corrects and looks over all of the dialogue in the manga version that Murata gives to him to make sure it's all good and consistent. This means he approved the statement of Saitama saying that Boros was almost a fight or real fight, if you consider Viz the translation authority, or 
Saitama even looks rather excited when he comes back to Earth with a smile on his face during this fight, shocked he made it back from the moon, and even talks about how strong Boros was to Genos. From here, Saitama beats <laughs> Boros, but it is not made to be funny, and in no way was Saitama walking away from Boros drawn with heavy detail supposed to be considered a gag. The line from Boros, you are too strong, was supposed to be a sad thing for Saitama, as Boros had just lived Saitama's dream. Hmm. Even in the anime watered down version, they tried to use a sad piano for this scene, and the panels showing Saitama's face are never drawn comedically, which are more obvious, say, with the OK scene. It's not the same. <laughs> wait, 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 stop. Don't skip Ugh. this video because I've got great oh, news for you and your hair. If you are tired of losing or receiving, I'm good with my hair. Same energy. Saitama even lies to Boros to try and hype up how it was a good fight, like the prophecy said it would be, but Boros calls him out as a liar. Saitama did not beat Boros because it was funny. He beat Boros because he was too strong. And in the original draft by Murata, when he drew this fight in the manga, he was forced by one to remake it numerous times because he made Boros too clown-like when he started losing and not dignified enough when he fought Saitama. One actually went out of his way to make Boros have dignity against Saitama and to make it more serious. Okay. Yet it's supposed to be funny? Something similar happens later with human monster Garo, in which Saitama hmm. is hoping that Garo can keep powering up like Boros and is happy when Garo can take some blows from him, but becomes disappointed as well and talks about how Garo is kind of doing what he does, being a villain instead of a hero for fun. Two limit-breaking opponents fight Saitama, and he doesn't just beat them in one punch to be funny. This argument definitely just mm. doesn't hold up later after the first sets of chapters. Maybe if the story kept going with the same flow as the first chapters, this would make sense, but a lot of One Punch Man is about Saitama trying to discover his humanity, and while he's funny, and he's a contrast to the bleak world around him, he doesn't win just because it's funny, so nor do I think he'd beat Goku because it's funny. A pretty <laughs> ignorant claim, no offense. Read the manga, learn what some words are, visit a library for once in your lives, maybe. <laughs> jokes <laughs> the other argument is obviously the name one punch man in which i technically went over already as being based on his power being end game and everyone else being early game so he one shots them and gets bored but even then this is still contentious even with the actual staff behind the series and not agreed on so why are the fans acting like it's agreed on yusuke murata the artist once came out and said what he thinks the ending of one punch man will be and in hmm. this breakdown, Yusuke says that he thinks the strength of Saitama doesn't come from just his limiter breaking, but from the powers of God as well, and at the end of the series he will fight and defeat God, then losing his powers. After he loses his powers, he still remains as a hero, but then gets defeated by every villain and monster in one punch, so the association then calls him One Punch Man. As you know, Saitama isn't actually referred to as One Punch Man in the story, but Caped Baldi. So Yusuke was making a gag about how Saitama might just get one tapped at the end instead. Now I'm not saying that Yusuke's word is canon, or that's how it's actually going to end, just that the term One Punch Man isn't what a lot of fans act like it is, nor is it agreed upon. Saitama also still trains and gets stronger throughout the series, and thinks he could beat himself from yesterday, but if Saitama could beat anybody, then why can't he beat himself from the future? Is there some kind of Saitama plus rule to Saitama's omnipotent fiction soloing level punches? Ain't no telling. Once again, unlike no telling. Also, did you guys seriously forget that he trained to get his powers or you're not only illiterate but maybe blind? But even in the battle with Boros, with the almost a real fight statement I brought up earlier, or almost a fight statement, if Boros was strong enough to, say, vaporize a star using the One Punch Man compass, which most people think is mistranslated or he can't actually do, and that's enough to almost be a fight or real fight to Saitama, how would Saitama, who's a beyond spatial dimensions and can upgrade right. almost anybody in fiction, some who could kill Boros by simply existing in the same multiverse, at all think Boros was remotely competent or almost fight-like. Even if Saitama went very easy on him, if he's multiple levels of infinity higher than him, hmm. the statement, this is almost a fight, doesn't make any sense. In terms of narrative, One Punch Man is rather unique as well, with many characters turning into what they surround themselves with or heavily desire. Whether it be monsters or whatever have you, 
Garo and Saitama are great examples of this. If Saitama's ultimate goal is to have an intense and great fight with all his powers as his dreams at the beginning of the series hmm. suggest, then would it not make sense for him to eventually create or find a reality in which that is possible? Say Saitama maybe, wished maybe he not. weak enough to lose, would he not eventually lose? Who's to say Goku couldn't be the ultimate opponent that Saitama was looking for that could give him a good fight like his dreams wanted? I would think he would be. I would think so. Say objectively, Saitama would win based off these types of arguments. All said and done, is it impossible for Saitama to beat Goku? No, absolutely not. Saitama could uh -oh. very well watch Goku go Super Saiyan 3 or Ultra Instinct Kaioken times 100 say okay and then one shot him or something. i know right who knows but to say that one punch man is purely a gag story is pretty disrespectful to the actual story and author and it seems to ignore what the story really is pretty heavily i'd say at the end of the day maybe in a few years saitama comes out and shows a feat that makes us really believe he could just defeat goku but not because he's a gag character and goku is stinky shiny over the top shonen guy but because he's a character like many others whose power simply started at the beginning instead of the end, and he has much more to show us. True. I think that's the end of it. <laughs> I like that. That's nice. That is nice. Got a crossover of both, pretty much like that i debate with an anime yeah. <laughs> wow yeah there you have it i mean good straight up like straight up question you can answer it if you want to in the comment section who you think wins between goku and satyam like honestly, I think he kind of a little bit, you know, a little bit spot on. He he bit he's a bit spot on. I think it's gonna be, you know, Satyam gonna it's gonna be a little bit before he actually. I mean, they're probably neck and neck. They're toy with each other a little bit, but I think Goku might have that extra edge, you know, the edge that off Satyam, you know, because like he said, Goku does have that surpass surpass his body. You know his body limits so many times we don't seen that so many times like he did it so many times and just dragon ball alone you know dragon ball dragon ball z so yeah i mean what you is you know what you think who won you know just comment in the comment section you know when you do that in the comment section just hit the like button you know hit the like button and you know hit that subscribe button as well if you are new Appreciate you for stopping by. If you are a regular subscriber and just come across this video, I appreciate you very much. Make sure you spread this out too. Make sure you share it up. You know, hit them likes. You know, algorithm would thank me even better for good showmanship. And I would endure anything that you store for me that I'm very grateful for. Other than that, this is Bob signing off. And I'll see you in the next video.